and we're rolling yeah, with I Sensei agree. Julio Arce. What's going on, brother? What's up, my man? How long have you been in Queens for? Yeah, I've been in Queens pretty much my whole life. Like, guys, like when I came to New York, now it's 20 years of living in Queens. 20 years, of, so you came when you were how old? I came to New York when I was about eight, eight nine years old. Okay. Right? So I was, I was born in Florida originally. Born in Florida, not Columbia. Not Columbia. I was born in Florida. My, my, my parents wanted me to be a US citizen. Then right away once I was born, I went to live back in Columbia. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, pretty much grew up without knowing a word of English. <laughs> Where in and, Columbia? In uh, Cali. Okay. Is that near Medellin? Close by. Close, close by. by. In the mountains? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I loved it because back when I, when I lived there, you know, no, the fact that you, you pretty much have a ranch, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> like, my, my, my dad owned, like, a, a huge ranch there. We had, we had about, like, 20 dogs, cows. We had uh, three... Three little man-made lakes where we went to like fish and stuff. Oh, cool! And we made the whole thing into a, like a like a go kart and dirt bike and uh, trail. So we would ride bikes like up and down the trail, like hitting like doing like a like a track. You were a little chubby as a kid. Did you have like a bigger bike to hold on? So hang on. So I went through all <laughs> I went through all three stages. So when I was in Colombia, it was so hot over there. Then you know we were we used to like play a lot of soccer. Like, and we used to play games. I'd be, I used to be very active. So I was actually very skinny when I was little. Now I came here thinking I could eat everything I want. So I would be skinny forever. Next thing you know, it's like I look like a Noompa Loompa. I'm like, we got to throw me. that picture on the screen right now. Oh my Somehow, God. Somehow they got to put it up there. Like, this is how we started. Yeah, I'll send you a pic. I'll send you a picture of what I what I look like. I've seen the know. chubby Julio picture, dude. That's... Those little cheeks. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> have rolls here, rolls here, rolls here, everywhere. But so you didn't get chunky until you came to the U.S. Oh yeah, standard American diet. You know, there you go. Freaking ate everything on sight. Think I'm like I'll be skinny all my life. Next thing you know, it's like you said you were you know bullied because of your weight growing up. Is there a certain story or situation or incident that like sticks in your head like you can remember oh man with, without a doubt i think just on the fact that i was already an overweight kid i was sensitive about you know like the way i felt in my own body um you walk into a classroom and you notice kids already looking at the looking it's like the eyes staring at you like they're ready to roast you <laughs> like they're like they're like yo this guy doesn't speak a word of english so we're gonna rip on this kid because he's not only, he can't speak English, but he's also fat. So, mind you, you know, like in the beginning, I, I'm thinking everyone's just trying to be friendly. You know, all these people are talking to me. I'm like, I'm, I don't understand a word of, of English. And, but then I think once I kept repeating the word, like I kept like hearing the same thing, you know, like fat, chubby, right? You're gross, this and that. It, it's like, you, you go home and you're, you're like, like you go, I went to like my parents and I'm like, you know, what does that mean? And then someone's like, like who's saying this to you? I just I'm like, I'm, I'm talking in Spanish. I'm like, I think they're just trying to be my friends. Right. And like, like, no. So you didn't even know you were getting bullied. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know until like I started learning English more and I started to understand it. And you know, then it was it was just like you just hear these like hurtful comments every single day, but. Luckily, like the way I saw it, you know, I had like my own upbringing where like my dad was really tough and he's like, he, you know, we come from a, play, a family that we joke around each other a lot in Spanish. So it's like, you have thick skin. Right, right. You know, but when these kids are trying to say it in a hurtful way, you know, it didn't bother me at first, but instead of trying to take like a, like a certain action that a lot of kids take or they, they go a whole different course, I'm just like, yeah, I got to do something about it. It's like. Kids are constantly picking on me. They're trying to, you know, like take my food, you know, try to pick up me because of, you know, I'm thick. Because also did, when I was younger, I did have like that, was that bowl haircut. I got, I got to send you a picture of that too. Like, actually, it's in the picture that I sent you. Um, so for me, that was a huge eye opener. I was like, yeah, I got to start training. And the first time I, I started doing like jujitsu in like beginner class and 
I was like, fucking fell in love with it. You were addicted. Dude, it was hooked. I'd run, I hit the walls of Jericho, some kid in the <laughs> first jiu-jitsu class. Mind you, I had no, no idea what the hell I was doing. I was just like, you just watch wrestling. So wait, how? What, what year did you start then? If you were 13, maybe like that. I was, it was, I started in like two, 2006. 2006. 2000, actually, no, 2004. 2004. So I stopped watching wrestling by then. Yeah, but then it started like getting a... If I used to like watch these like you know like little videos online, and and that actually makes it feel it makes you feel old because we were around the time when the internet was just starting. starting. It's like you know you got AOL and you, know, you try to get your screen name and everything, and now it's like I had dial up, I had dial up where mom's like I gotta call my aunt get off get offline <laughs> they gotta call long distance yeah. that we and... the global phone call. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. We end up getting another line in the house just because, like, if I was on AOL, you know that sound, yeah. <laughs> that she couldn't make a phone call. So that's, you know, that's what happened. Um, so you started when you were 13. What did you gravitate towards more, uh, kickboxing or jiu-jitsu? For me, it was jiu-jitsu. Because I love the, the, the concept of, like, choking somebody out, putting them in positions where just, like, they just feel helpless. And you're just like, holy shit, man. It's like, like you can control them. Yeah, especially yeah. as I said, like, look, you know, like, we're... We're not big people, but when we, <laughs> then you're, you know, you, you go from being like a kid into an adult class and you're throwing older people around uh -huh. and you're just like, damn, like I have this big guy who just cannot escape from the bottom of a, a side control. Right. As strong as they are. And, and they got like, 40, 50 pounds on you and yeah, they're grown ass man. Like, you're just throwing them around like it's easy and you're just like, yeah. Nice. Like, and you would never expect it. Like, right. You see us out on the streets, like we, we're just like these casual people, you know, you could be like the most nerdy looking person and then next thing you know, I find out you're just like an assassin on the mat, just choking people out. That's, um, you know, that reminds me of like the, the Jordan, Jordan Peterson quote or whatever. Like they have it on Instagram, like, you know, you want your kids to be, be a savage or something yeah. like that, but then you learn to control it. Yeah. Like you want to be a badass, but humble. Yeah. yeah. It's like, look, I, I could look like the dorkiest looking person and I'm just like, I'm fine with it. With I, your fanny pack. With my fanny pack. Come on, I, man. Yeah, I tried to put you on to it for years, dude. dude I I remember when we, when we went to, what was it, Utica? Yeah, it was Utica. I think you gave it to yeah, me, right? I was like, the, oh, the, I was like, my North Face one. Yeah, I was like, game changer. Game changer. Dude, game changer. Game changer. I remember my dad used to always have a fanny pack. <laughs> back, so I'm like, my dad. Famous picture of The Rock. Hell yeah. With the fanny pack of the black leather. Yeah, he's buff. Um, so you started when you were 13. When did you start training at headquarters? Because I think that's when I met you. I think... Uh, well, the first time we met was actually when we were doing the black belt test in William Patterson University. Oh, God, that's adorable. So this is also when I first met Giuliano, <laughs> which was hysterical. because that's So what, Giuliano is one of the instructors at New Dorp. At New Dorp. And he's, I think was, he's opening up his new location in, mm -hmm. in Freehold. So yeah. congratulations to him. Um, we, were, we, were like the, we were doing like the black belt testing. I think I, I already earned my first degree by then. And they were just like, literally, there's a point where, like, there's that ring. I think you were grappling. It was you, Mike Murray, uh, myself, and Giuliano. And this is when Giuliano used to put, like, the, 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 the look. He still, what do you mean? He still, <laughs> he still, he still, he still does. does. He still does. He still got the look. It. And, you know, I think that's the first time that he got, like, choked out. Like, I choked him out. He was and tight. He was, he was upset, but it's a struggle. But then I also saw you. That's what I'm like. I'm like, who's that guy with the green hair? It's like, and you, I think you, you were rolling. You were tossing people around. I'm like, I'm like, yo, and I think you were going with Giuliano. And like, I'm like, yo, and that's when I learned that you were a fighter. And then that's when I like, I kind of just gradually met you. And then I really met you when we fought in um, Club Abyss, the new, the Asylum Fight Leagues or New Breed. Right. Jimmy's got to come in. Yo, um, I like how you made your desk like your height. Like, it was, you raised it up a little bit. It was lower than that before. It's a great joke. A short joke. It's a short joke. Never heard that one so before. On you, Can we get, we were, we were in the flow of it. You until you came. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you're in the flow of it. We were talking about having you on the next podcast, but they said it's going to get expensive because they would have to put subtitles. <laughs> Even though you're speaking English. <laughs> Iron Man's treating you well, and the podcast goes well. Mm -hmm. See you guys. I mean, that's what most fighters do when they retire, podcasts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Have fun, brother. That's true. <laughs> See you guys.
Can we get back to the podcast? <laughs> ADD. You got the last word, Jimmy. Good job. I'll let you have the last one. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Shut the door. I want to go back to the podcast. No, no, it's okay. I was trying to think of a joke for fighting a six foot two guy, but I don't have a joke. We're good? So the first time was abyss. That's what you remember. Yes, that's what we. That's what. That's what. That's what. There was downstairs. We fought in the base. No, no. The basement. It's Club Abyss, and that the basement was the locker rooms, and upstairs was the fights. Yes, yes. And that's where I also met New Breed. New Breed. Yes. Yes. That's where I met you. That's where I met uh, Demetrius. And that's where we fought that kid RJ Stars that you hit him with the George St. Pierre. You wrapped around your body and you like slammed oh, his yeah, face. I, I had sunburn for that fight. <laughs> so I was like, damn, I can't go in the cage looking this white. So the fight was like on a Saturday. So like Tuesday or Wednesday, I went tanning. And I was like, oh, I'm Puerto Rican. Put me in for the full like 12 <laughs> minutes. Oh my God. Like when we bounced off the ropes, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it it was pretty funny because that's also the night like when I met when I met you and I met Demetrius and Demetrius was so nervous for that fight. That's the one fight, yeah. Not and the guy, yeah, like and then not the guy like four seconds. You're like, you're like, you sure you're nervous, man? <laughs> <laughs> so my first recollect, recollect, my, I sound like Jimmy now. <laughs> Keep that in, guys. Um, I remember we were on the mat by Sheon's office, mm. and you know, you like you said, yeah. you saw me at the the black belt test and all that stuff. Like, you see people around, you know, like, oh, that kid's from this school and that kid's from this school. And we were going, and I knew your grappling was good, and you got me in a triangle, and I had to shake out and put my knee, like, in your butt and pull it. I was like, this young mother, this he's going to tap me out with a triangle? That's the first, like, <laughs> memory that sticks out of my head of you. It was right over there. Yeah. Then I remember then, from there on, you just kept choking me out with every goddamn guillotine <laughs> and the freak. I'm like, this motherfucker. I'm like, God damn it. Like, I'm like, you so freaking crap, dude. I'm like, how does he keep catching me with this? I'd be like, it's like, nah, he's not catching me with this again. Again, no, 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 no. And every time is I would just get caught. And I would just leave them like frustrated. I'm like, how? How? You want to thought I escaped? I would still just get caught. But I'm like, damn. And that's when you were, that's when you were already in the, like you went to the pro leagues. Yes. And because there's no. I only had four amateur fights. You had like 47. <laughs> We were just doing the math. We yeah, we damn. And then when you look at it, it's, I have sixty-four fights total now. Sixty-four. Yeah. How the hell do you keep track of all that? That's a lot Dude. of fights. So, at what point did you decide, like, hey, I like, I want to fight, or I want to get to the UFC, or was it like, oh, I'll do a couple of amateur fights, and then like you got the bug mm-hmm. to go the, or was it like, no, this is what I want to do from the get go? Did you like, no? So. I remember watching Junior Fighters. Right. I came here. One of my teammates, he, they, he did Junior Fighters. And, um, you know, like, I, I was still wasn't experienced enough to do kickboxing. Because, like, I kind of did it backwards. I did MMA first, and then I went to kickboxing and boxing. And I watched Junior Fighters, and I would, like, see, this is when I, like, saw, I saw Nick. That's when he had, like, his curls and the pretty boy hair. I saw, I saw Jimmy. But I didn't, I didn't know them yet. Like, I just see them. And like I, I saw like a bunch of like the, the up and comers like of that generation and one of my teammates fought that night and then I'm like I'm like yo it's like I wanna fight and I, I had to wait until I was eighteen though because that like by that point I think junior fighters like fizzled out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like I saw people before me like getting the opportunity, I'm like, oh damn, I wanna fight, I wanna fight, I wanna fight. And then uh my Shion went to me like when I turned eighteen, it's like, Yeah, you wanna do an MMA fight? I'm like Straight yeah, to MMA. Yeah, straight to MMA. And I remember that's when everybody won that night by rear naked choke. Was that the showboat? That was the, the showboat was the in show Atlantic boat. City. We used to have like seven, nine people on a fight card back then. That fight card, it was Chris Turan, Craig Alexander, Jimmy, Nick, myself. You were there. I think Jose was there. and Jose we, fought Keith Peterson. Yes, he fought Keith Peterson. And that's when, and Larry also, there was like eight of us fighting that There's a bunch of us, yeah, yeah. And that's also the first time where I like, I realized, um, one, I, like I, I had to get used to having Tiger in my corner. That was like the first time like I legitimately like met Tiger and he's like telling me- You weren't training at headquarters at all back then? 
No. I got like I went right into MMA without training at headquarters. Like Sharon was just like, all right, go. He vouched for you. Yeah. Vouch. And I was that and by then I was doing I had like a bunch of like Naga tournaments right. plus COC tournaments. I'm like, all right, just train for it. I'll, I'll be ready. So at that point did you know you wanted to go pro and you wanted to go all the way? Yeah. Um it, it's I remember like Tiger, you know, it's like it's like it's like you're he's like, that was great. It's like it's like start you know, start coming up to headquarters and like start training more so like, you can be good and and like me like not not really knowing like i knew of him but i didn't never like met him in person i was like i'm like oh shit like you know like i, I held that like like dear to me and then i'm just like oh just train every day if i can get up there find a way to get to headquarters and from there on man then i'm like that's what that's when i like i saw you training i started i'm like this was the whole fight team's training remember those old videos that's like Jimmy doing the, the plyos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick throwing oh, stuff. Yeah, throwing yeah, stuff. Yeah. I'm like, damn. It's like, I was like, I want some of that. It's like, shit. Let's put me in there. And then, damn, I just met everybody. And if you know, it's like we've known each other for now almost two decades. It's been a while. Shh. Trying to make you feel old, bro. Wow, yeah, bro. So you had, let's go through the math. Let's do it. You had 14 amateur MMA fights. Yes. 13, you said? Kickboxing? 13 kickboxing fights and seven boxing fights. Seven boxing fights. So you had over almost 40 fights mm -hmm. before you went pro. Tiger made me take the journey. It's like, it's like, <laughs> well, you started, I mean, you started fighting yeah. when you were 18, mm -hmm. right? Like you had just turned 18 when you yeah. had your first, your first match. And then he was like, all right, I want you to do kickboxing. All right, I want you to do the gloves. And I'm like, I don't want to do the gloves. I'm like... <laughs> I don't want to do it. And then Ray's like, goes to the tie, he's like, you got to do it. You won't go pro, you got to do it. I'm like, oh. And then you end up winning. And I win the gloves. That was how, one of the fun, best experiences of my life because I fought, yeah, bad boys, wear them proudly. I fought one, I fought every week and I had to go in all these different locations. It started in like this like little high school, little rinky dink gym. There was one point where there was like the, the boxing ring and there was just like a couch just right there. <laughs> And just people sitting on the couch and the bleachers watching. Next, you know, like I'm fighting at the Yonkers Casino. Then I'm fighting at the Garden. I'm like, holy shit. And I got to fight every week. So it was the best experience of my life. And it got me comfortable. So then when I went to the pro level, I felt comfortable in every aspect of right. it. Kickboxing, is, boxing, yep. jiu-jitsu. Very, very uh, well-rounded. Um, and speaking of well-rounded, let's talk about your, uh, your last fight. So was it? It's been three weeks now? Yeah. It's been three weeks. What was the game plan going in there? Basically do what you did. Yeah, literally it was lateral movement and just keep this guy just like guessing. Frustrate the hell out of him. Right. Um, you know, we, we... You frustrate the hell out of everybody. <laughs> you know, like even Christian will be like, I know Jimmy's going to hit me harder, but at least I can hit him back. Like Julio will hit you and then you go to hit him and he's not there. He's over there. He's over there. Uh, as, uh, as, as, you know what? What I love, what I love hearing though is like, I, I try to be the biggest pest on for everybody. Right. Like I want to be, I want to be difficult to fight because look, you know, like, look, I, what I love to do is, and I learn from every single person I'm going with, even if like, look, even someone like Christian who's up and coming and he's freaking making it up there. He's, you know, him, him and like Ryan are, like the next generation, mm -hmm. which is freaking great. I'm sure you're freaking so yeah. proud to see that. Yeah. But it's like, I'm constantly just like I, grabbing things from like, from Jimmy, from you, from Shane, from every single person I'm going with. And then I'm like, let me add this to, to what I do. And then what happens, and when I spar, it's like, I want to make myself so hard to hit. I want to be the biggest pain in the ass. So when somebody goes like, I fucking hate fighting you. I'd be like, I'm that's like, good. I'm like, I love you too, man. Like, I love you too. <laughs> But that's good because then you make the other, you know, you make the yeah. other fighters better and they learn to deal with that frustration of trying to hit somebody, learning to make angles and cut the person off and all that stuff. So it makes everybody yeah. better. And you're a lefty. That too. Let's just add that in there. And you're a lefty. That so, too. Um, so you stuck to the game plan. Yeah. I mean, obviously, even the commentators were talking about it, how just the way he's moving and even that jab, that jab is working good. I'm boxing a lot of times, you know, a righty and a lefty, yeah. the jab kind of cancels each other's out each other out but you were using it beautifully and you knew that guy was I mean he was throwing bombs and whether he it was just wanted to be 
forward. Yes. Re- whether it was arms or legs. I mean, he was throwing spinning hook okay, with everything. Did you kind of expect him to gas out too and slow down a little yeah. bit? Yeah. So I, we, you know, me, uh, me and Shion Shulman watched uh, watched his fights. Ray as well, and, and like all he did was walk forward mm-hmm. and just spinning kicks, elbows, spinning back fists. Like he just he wanted to just make me a highlight reel. Yes. And what's great about that fight is. It was all him. It was all like the hype was on him. He's from Charles Oliveira's camp, you know. So, you know, he's already like being put up here. Right. It's like, ah, you know. And it was more like, oh, let's feed this guy to the wolves. And I'm like, I'm like, don't fall asleep on me. I'm like, look, I may have lost a couple of fights here and there, but my fights were close and I'm just, a, I'm going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. And don't count me out like that. And like my, I'm like, my focus, like, I want to make you miserable in there. So, what I like doing when I fight is, like, some people like to finish instantly. I like to make you feel helpless. So, when you want to be like, you're trying to hit me, you can't hit me. Right. I'm going to freaking hit you and know that I can still finish you even in the Then they get round. frustrated and they expose it some more as they throw. Exactly. Um, you got off to a great start. I feel like your last fight, you got off to a slow start. Mm-hmm. This one, it, like, the tempo you set really good, the movement you were hitting and then moving good. Was that in your mind too, like... Not to take the first round, I don't want to say off, but kind of like yeah. some fighters, they do the first round, they kind of figure out their opponent, their speed, their distance, and then they start pushing the pace. I felt like you got to it right from the get-go in this fight. Yeah, we actually had a... So when I go, when I go into fights, I, wanna, I started now going in, in there as if I'm in the second round, right? So what happens is uh, Shion Shulman's like, we're going to do 15 hard minutes of just pad work and just going. So when you're up, like you're you're in round two pretty much. Right. So now I'm already warmed up and I, I like I'm I'm good. And your conditioning is another and, thing that's and amazing. Like, so I get nice. So I'm getting my read the reads that I need a lot faster, and I can now start to pick it up even like at a faster pace. And sometimes I'll kind of warm up and go in cold, and then I go in and they have you waiting. So it's like you get cold. You never. That's 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 one of the things too, right? You never know when you're gonna go. Yeah. Sometimes you do, but sometimes it's like, all right, you could be up in five minutes, or you could be up in twenty minutes. But be ready. Yeah. And the thing is, I was also the first fight, so I was, I'm like, this is great. So now you know when you're I'm going. Like, I'm gone. You're so going at six oh five. All right, we start warming up at this time. Mm-hmm. There's no guessing. And it and it went great. Like everything according to plan and. Got the victory, man. Back on the win column, and now no, now we got to climb up. So, who do you want next? Do you have anybody in mind, or a group of people, or a certain fight you're looking for, a certain fight card you want to get on? You're trying to get on. So I'm tr- I'm trying to get a fight, possibly end of July or August. And no, somewhere along there, they're going back to London. Now, depending, people are like, you should fight Davy Grant because they say that would be an interesting mat- matchup. I'm like, if he takes a fight, takes a fight. I was looking for Adrian Yanez, but he's already matched up. And most of the people were like ranked up or like already like matched up. Or if they, I am offered as a fight and they're ranked ahead of me. You know how it is. People are like, you know, it, yeah, they don't, they don't want, they don't want to go back. They don't want to fight down. So I'm like, hey, if you're down to fight, you're down to fight. But I'm like, I'm just, I'm climbing up. So you're ever going to put in front of me, that's what I'm going to fight. And now I'm going in there with a much different mindset and a much different plan as I've kind of done in even previous fights before that. Mm. I feel like now as a as a fighter, just through like coaching, you know, being on the mat and like really just like expanded everything and more. It's like I'm absorbing even more knowledge and now it's like I'm really coming into my own as a, as a fighter. Out of anybody in the top 15, who would be your not dream matchup but let's say like who do you think would be the most exciting fight or that you match up stylistically with the best i think I would or just love, a fun fight you would want to have i would love to fight dominic Cruz one day just because he moves as he much moves as, yeah. and it would be like if we move a lot it, i mean it's like when you had when you fought uh Horiguchi, like you guys were like, like running literally everywhere on the ring. Yeah, we were all over. You guys, they, they tracked it. Was like, they did. They actually put that up once. Yeah, yeah. But with him, it's like we'll be moving so much, it will probably end up going. It's like we're gonna stand in front of each other and bang. Yeah. And that's something that I'm also trying to make better. Like I love watching Shane fight because he does a lot of like great stuff in there. 
Mind that he gives a heart attack when we watch him fight. Oh but, my god! But he does such like smart stuff in there. I'm literally on the edge of my seat. Like, like, just, like, just get your hands up just a little bit yes. more. Just, just a little bit <laughs> higher. <laughs> you're, like, you're like you're you're like sweating there. Like you're literally like pulling the skin off your knees. You're just like you ever seen Chuck Liddell watching fights? <laughs> Where he's like that's how in which it, like, like I'm moving my head like it's gonna help him move his head <laughs> when he's halfway across the country or something. <laughs> but yeah, man, like I've been watching a lot. Like I, I love watching Shane's fights and I love training with him because it's like when he spars, he does things that I like to implement that I started implementing into my game plan because he he go he throws down. He's not afraid to take one and yeah. give one. Yeah, yeah so it's like. I started like really taking that in and I like I'm like I'm like embracing that. So now like when I fight like if you want to stand close, I'm gonna have that in my back pocket. Stay in the we'll pocket, we'll, yeah. we'll go there. You wanna stay out of range? We'll stay out of range. So it's always such a fun learning factor from like learning from every single one of these guys. Speaking of fights, speaking of Shane, mm -hmm. um Ryan Burgos just fought. Ryan Burgos, for you guys that don't know, is Shane's younger brother. Right now, they're going to put up a picture. They have to find it of him shirtless at the Naga tournament with his mohawk. Right? That's what, hey guys, dude, imagine, He's okay. never going to escape that. Hold up. Hold up. Imagine you're like a kid. And you're like, ah, we'll go have fun in this tournament. And you got this one kid with a mohawk. Ripped. Ripped. Six pack. And he's ready to... Seven. It's just, <laughs> just like... And, he's, and, he, and you go in the, in the ring like, ah, and then he's, he's walking. He's pacing back. He's like, pacing like, like, a pro, like a pro fighter. Um... Talk about built for this, but yes, let's, uh, oh, perfect, look at that, 459. So this is his first professional fight. He was, what was he, 4-0? Oh? He went, I think he was, yeah, he was 4-0. Four, oh. four first round finishes? Yeah. Four first round finishes. I want those shorts. Yeah, you got the camel shorts. Though. I like those shorts. I don't know. Nice low kick. Ooh, that knee hurt him. You know what's crazy? That knee hurt him, again with the knee. That kid's just relentless, just like... That's his nickname. Yeah, Oh, right. no wonder. You know, the funny thing is, like, at one point, look, watch, he's going to start busting this guy up, like, he's hitting him, and he's going to look at Keith Peterson and be like, yo, man, you going to stop this fight? You going to stop this fight? Like, he's hitting him, he's going to start looking at him, he's like, hey, bro, it's like... Ooh. Look, 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 look yep. at him, he's like, hey, you going to stop this? Literally making the guy say it's like a speed. That was a good call, though. They, they, they could let it go. They could let it go. He feels like that, man. He's all over him, though. Oh. Looking for the guillotine. He didn't even really get the takedown. I think that, I think that body shot. He and just, then he kept going back to it. That guy just folded. He, they just realized, he's like, what did I just sign up for? Mm -hmm. Ooh. So, we were doing tournament training in Hoboken, and Christian was watching the fight. He ran off the mat. He's at the front desk, and I go, "Ooh!" And I turn and look because I was explaining the move to the kids. He's like, "Sorry, sorry." And then he's like, "He was he went for the you know he went for the choke, and I got excited." That's why I went, "Ooh!" He went for the dars. You know, it's crazy. It's just how good the new generation's getting. You know, like as we're coming up, everybody was like very one-dimensional like you, you're watching all these fighters now it's like everyone's so well-rounded well they started doing everything when yeah. they were young like, Oof. like think about it even if you like this I, is ground and pound i love how he's going from ground and pound to looking for the choke still looking for the choke punching with the other hand he's looking for the choke He's just a savage. Looks and like the guy you fought. Coming forward, coming forward, coming yep. forward. And it's oh, nice elbow. The crazy part is he's still so like he's only he's so young still, mm -hmm. and he's only just gonna get it's like this. He's is just gonna, gonna get better. It's just gonna be the knees were beautiful in this fight, <sighs> body and the head. I think this is the finishing sequence. No, this is where Christian was like, oh. Because that's, that's Christian's move. That's Christian's move. Gotta love those. That's where he went. Oh! Ryan was just looking at somebody. A 
again with the knees, this, knees this, to the body. This poor soul, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Body lock. And the beginning and the end. There you go. The one shot that poor guy got, he's like, all right, all right, I can go home. <laughs> yeah, he's like, got one more nice. shot. He's like, all right, you're going to pay for that. He, um, he got the rear naked choke. Boom, right there. I think he's going to readjust, right? There you go. Slides it behind. Nope. This is where he readjusts. Boom, right Boom. there. From like a seven-year-old kid with a mohawk <laughs> being a savage staring you down to now. Yep. Being this beast. Making his pro debut. This was in, uh, was this in Philly? Yeah. It was in Philly, right? So, somewhere, yeah. somewhere over there. I think it was nearby here. How old is Ryan? Ryan, I think he's 20. No, that young? Yeah, because I think, I think, I guess whatever casino they're over there, they have to give him a wristband because they don't, oh, allow, because kids, he was... they don't allow kids underage in the casino. Oh. I think they have to give him a wristband. That's like when my daughter was in the club. Did you ever hear that story? <laughs> you told me about that. I was so we, we fought in, I don't know, somewhere in PA where there was a casino. Mm -hmm. And the exit was closed. And you could only leave through the club because we stayed, we, yeah. we were the last fight. I go downstairs, I change, whatever. My daughter, my mom was with me. So we're leaving and we go into a, a nightclub and the guy's like, oh, she can't come in here. I'm like, this is the only exit. We're just, we're just going to cut out and go that way. He's like, oh, okay. So we're leaving. Obviously, some people are like, oh, congratulations. Yeah. So they're talking. And then my dad lost his phone. Oh, man. <laughs> so my mom's like, oh, I think I left in the locker room. So I said, okay, let's go look for it. Ari, stay here. Yeah, she's like seven. Yeah, and she's just like... So we're looking for the phone. Come to find out, my mom gave my dad the phone back. It was in his back pocket. So it had to be like a good 15, 20 minutes by the time we get back to the club. She's and somebody's like, like she's got to leave. And they're like, oh, her, her dad was the fighter. He's over there. He's coming back. Right, we can't send her out. So she's like... Then we're driving home. She's like, Daddy, there were girls dancing in cages in bathing suits. I'm just like, oh my God, my wife is going to kill me. My wife is gonna kill me, and she was in the club for like a good twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Oh my um, god! So um, hopefully we see you in July or in August. Um, London's cool, man. London's a good place to fight. Yeah, I was the fun. first fight in London, and you know how it is in the states. Oh my god! You're the first fight. The arena's eighty to ninety percent empty. I'm the first fight in London. I'm expecting that. I go out. It's packed. It's crazy. It's packed. Like 98. Like you can't find empty. And like, holy shit. They, it's like they literally stop everything. I mean, you saw like the last London card. They, the, I was talking um, to a couple people that were, that, that were there. And they're like, yeah, we literally, for the hours that they had the UFC playing, we shut down everything. Yeah. Like work everything to go to watch these fights. I'm like. They only oh. get it once. Yeah, maybe twice a year, if that. Um, yeah, they do. They always do around March, and I guess now they're in the summer. Is that something yeah, new? Yeah, they're, they're, they're coming back. So they don't get it that much. So they appreciate it more, and they're there from the very first fight. I mean, if you ever been to a fight card and you're there for the whole thing, it's a six seven hours. It can be. Yeah, you know? those, and those guys are there loud for oh, six yeah. seven hours. When Jimmy fought in, uh, was it Scotland? No, I think it was Scotland. Yeah, Scotland, yeah. Glasgow. Place was. Crazy. It was a ruckus. And it smelled like beer. <laughs> but uh yeah, that'd be awesome if you get on the lender card. Dude. Got my fingers crossed for you. So yeah. Julio, thank you for uh for my joining man. us. Always, Always a pleasure. We'll see you guys next time. Click, like, subscribe. Smash that like button. Hit that button.